गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू गैलेक्सी ऑनलाइन लर्निंग डिविजन ऑफ गैलेक्सी ट्यूटोरियल्स आई एम सुनील जैसा एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी फ्रॉम योर इंग्लिश टेक्स्ट बुक फर्स्ट लाइट पोएम नेम द टाइटल ऑफ द पोएम इज अमांडा ओके दिस पोएम पोएम इज रिटन बाय रॉबिन क्रेन सी एवरी चाइल्ड इवन यू यू फील लेट योर फ्रीडम is controlled by whom your parents okay how we is control how the children free feel about the parents want to say about them that's what has been narrated in this poem by robert klein okay robin klein so the let's read the poem first don't bite your nails amanda Don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. Stop the slouching and sit up straight, Amanda. Then into bracket. There is a there is a languid emerald sea, where the sole in inhabitant is me, a mermaid drifting blissfully. Did you finish your homework, Amanda? Did you tidy your room, Amanda? I thought I told you to clean your shoes, Amanda. Again in bracket. I am an orphan roaming the street. I pattern soft dust with my hushed bare feet. The silence is golden. The freedom is sweet. Don't eat that chocolate, Amanda. Remember your acne, Amanda. Will you please look at me when I am speaking to you, Amanda? I am Rapunzel. I have not a okay. care. Life in a tower is tranquil and rare. I'll certainly never let down my bright hair. Stop that sulking at once, Amanda. You're always so moody, Amanda. Anyone would think that I nagged at you, Amanda. So this is what you see is that the parents are instructing, maybe mother or father instructing. Amanda is a young girl. I into bracket is what. the what amanda is feeling when her parents are instructing her what amanda is feeling is mine that has been written so that's what is been put into brackets and the instructions or the orders given by the parents are in a bold type without exceptions so now let us what you do is that we will understand each stanza okay so the first stanza Don't bite your nails, Amanda. Don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. Stop this slouching and sit up straight, Amanda. Now, hunch is hunch is means bending your upper portion of the body in a forward position. Like this, this is called a hunch. So the parent is telling Amanda, don't hunch, sit straight, stop that slouching. Okay. So what you see in this is that. Slouching is what again to stand or sit or move in a lazy way. Okay, that is slouching. Moving, sitting like this, slouching. Okay. So, what you see in this sanga is that Amanda is getting instructed. Okay, that you should not bite your nails. You should not sit lazily or move lazily, lazily with shoulders bent. Okay, and what you find is that the tone of instructions given to this little young girl is not a friendly one okay so since it is not friendly amanda is not interested she is not liking the tone the way the instructions are given to her so the poet wants to Tell the parents. Explain the parents that when you are instructing your child, see that they listen to you. So your tone should be a positive way. You should explain them what instead of instructing them, you should explain the need. You should talk in a friendly way to the children. Only when you talk in a friendly way, if you tell them in a friendly way, they will listen to you. Otherwise, they won't listen. Okay. So, all 
all these things. Why the parents are instructing Amanda? Because they want a child to be presentable in the society. Okay, she should be. So the pressure of being presentable in the society means not living for yourself, but you are living for whom? You are living for the society. How you have to present, how you have, what the society is going to say about you. Okay, these are what the parents want from their children and their children are not interested in such things. They want to live their own life. Okay, so that's what the poet wants to tell you in the first sense. Second, now this thing, second stanza is in a bracket. Means these are the feelings of that young girl Amanda. What she is thinking in her mind. There is a languid emerald sea where the sole inhabitant is me. A mermaid drifting blissfully. Okay. Languid means without any force. No one is forcing you. Okay. So she is saying there is a sea, emerald sea where no one is forcing you to do certain things. Okay. And mermaid, you know, doesn't really exist. It is just a imaginary creature. It's just you imagine a sea creature having the woman's head and the body of a head and body you have a trunk of a human and the tail of a fish. It is not real. It's just an imaginary thing. Okay. So let me explain it to you. So bracket means the what the feelings or what the girl Amanda is feeling about. Okay. She is really fed up of these instructions of her parents. She is feeling suffocated. So she wants to be free. She is imagining herself to be in the emerald sea. She is imagining herself to be a mermaid, slowly floating in this beautiful sea where no one is forcing her to do anything. Okay. So she is not liking the way her mother or father is instructing her. She wants to be free like a mermaid, drifting, slowly moving around, blissfully, happily in the emerald sea. Third stanza. Now again the instruction from a parent. Did you finish your homework, Amanda? Did you tidy your room? Amanda, I thought I told you to clean your shoes. Again. Okay. Amanda is now asked whether she has finished her homework whether she has cleaned her room, kept her room tidy, whether she has cleaned her shoes. Okay, now the instructions, first instructions were how to be presentable. Now instructions are different instructions. Okay, he, she is being, now these instructions are related to her surroundings. Okay, the instructions explain every aspect of how Aspect of her is related to questioning and proper way of living, proper guidance. She is disciplined. The mother or father, they want to discipline Amanda. That you have to keep your room tidy, you have to keep your shoes clean, you have to do your homework. So that means, along with uh, being parentable in society, you should also be a disciplined person. Okay, that's what the parents are asking of Amanda. So, they are, what's happening really is that at this young age, the innocence of Amanda is going, is getting, and she has been instructed to be very disciplined, be very responsible. I am an orphan roaming the street, Put Sandra. I pattern soft dress with my hush bare feet. The silence is golden, the freedom is free. Okay. See, Amanda is not an orphan, but she says I am an orphan means she's feeling that her parents are not taking care. Though she has parents, see the feeling which is not good. A child having parents, feeling that she is an orphan, is not a great feeling. It's a very bad part. Okay, so that's what. Amanda is feeling now that she is an orphan. Means she is that parents are not taking care of her. So it's a very 
it's not a good, uh, you know, it's a um, depressing way. Okay. So, parents, the poor ones uh, tell you that the parents should be careful in making their kids understand the ways of the world. Very carefully they should tell you that they should not speak with the children in such a way that they get far away from their parents. The relationship between the parents and the child getting apart divided. That should not happen. You can see Amanda now here perceive herself as an orphan roaming on the streets, moving aimlessly through the sand. Okay? And so shouting and yelling of her parents are too harsh for her. She's not liking that her parents are shouting at her. Okay, because she wants to be very quiet and still. Okay, so she wants to remain very free, away. She's feeling very dejected. Huh? This, the parents has to take care of. That's what the poet tells, that you should always see that your children are not drifting away from you. Don't eat the chocolate, Amanda. Remember your acne, Amanda. Will you please look at me when I'm speaking it to you, Amanda? Okay. Here now again, there are instructions to Amanda by her parents. The parents are telling her that you should not eat chocolate because what is going to happen? Because previously what had happened because of eating of excess of chocolate, she had acne, pimples on her face. So they are concerned about her external beauty. She has to look beautiful in this world. That's what her parents feel. So they are not allowing, giving her freedom to eat chocolates. So, and then they're saying, uh, she's saying, will you please look at me when I'm speaking to you, Amanda? So, Amanda is in her own thoughts and is not even caring to look. I mean, she's just or bogged up of her parents always shouting at her, yelling at her. So she's not looking at the parents when they are shouting at her, yelling at her. Okay, when she's being scolded. So that shows again that what? Because of the continuous yelling at your children, your children may get drifted away from you. And this is a very, very dangerous thing. So the parents have to be cautious about it. Stanza 6, I am a rampant soul. I have not a, I have not a care. Life in Tau is tranquil and rare. I will certainly never let down my bright hair. See, Rapunzel is a German fairy, you know, fairy tale, okay? Now, this Rapunzel is a very beautiful girl with very long hair and she was made captive by a witch and was made captive and she was to stay in the tower and this witch and she used to throw her long hair, such a long hair she had that it used to come down to the ground from the tower and the witch used to climb on this hair and used to reach to Rapunzel up in the tower. So, Amanda is in her own dreams. She is thinking herself to be Rapunzel who lived in a castle, in a tower. Okay, but she says that like Rapunzel who is to throw her long hair to dry out of the window of the tower and the witch is to then climb on this on her hair and reach the tower, um, reach Rapunzel. I won't do that because I don't want to be instructed by someone, to be in control by someone. I want to live a free life. I want to, I want freedom. So, I would like to live in a castle like Rapunzel, but I won't allow, allow my hair to, I won't leave, allow my hair to come down on the window so that someone, means someone, no one should control me. Okay, I want to live a very 
free life. The last panda. Stop sulking at once, Amanda. You are always so moody, Amanda. Anyone will think that I nagged at you, Amanda. Sulking means getting upset. Stop that sulking, getting angry or upset about something. Nag means irritate. Okay? So, the parents keep instructing Amanda, do this, don't do this, this is going to happen. If you do this, this is going to happen. You won't look beautiful. If you eat more chocolates, you are not going to look. Acne will come on your face. And so you won't look beautiful. Okay? So, but Amanda is, has lost you know, own dreams. The parents believe that Amanda is not reacting because she is annoyed. They feel that she is not reacting to her uh, instructions because she has got annoyed. Okay? So, Amanda's behavior has made her parents look bad and they are worried about their image. That's why they are saying that anyone will think that we are nagging you. Okay? They are concerned about how the society, how the neighbors will perceive them. As if they are behind, uh, they are behind uh, Amanda, they are nagging her. Okay? They want themselves to be looked upon by society as responsible. They feel that by instructing their young child, Amanda, they are being responsible parents. So they want the society to think themselves as responsible parents and not as nagging parents. Okay, so, but what has happened? Amanda has drifted away from them. So all the efforts to become responsible parents have failed. So this is a poem for basically for the parents to understand the way how they have to behave with their growing children, particularly the teenagers. Okay, the children of your age, how they have to behave instead of yelling, is continuously telling them do this, don't uh, do, don't do this, don't do that. Do this, this is right, this is wrong. Okay? The, all these instructions also they can give in a friendly way and can come closer to their children rather than getting drifting away from them. Okay? So, there are alliterations in this um, um, uh, poem. Then you see allusion, allusion, mermaid, allusion. This is it's not a reality, okay? Then metaphors you have, like often you don't have a nagging parent. Languid, emerald sea, languid and emerald type qualities are assigned to sea, okay? So that's a metaphor. Okay, so. This is what the poet wants to explain you in this point. Thank you.